Hi, I'm Shannon Ditta, and uh, I have my whole team with me. And so the first person we're going to kind of pass it off to is our principal, who's going to start it off, and then we'll go through our presentation. So this is Miss uh, Asia Robinson Atkins. Hello, everyone. A uh, pleasure to engage with you and be in community with you, albeit virtually. Um, as Ms. Ditta said, uh, my name is Ms. Asia Robinson Atkins, and I'm the very, very proud principal of PSIS 119, the Glendale School. Um, as you can see on our cover for our slideshow, we have our super duper rock stars uh, who helped me really move this ship of live school implementation, as well as uh, really ratcheting up our PBIS um, uh, components that we have in our school, which are Ms. Kelly Cunningham, Ms. Ditta, Ms. Hagelstein, and Ms. Kilbane. Um, but from here, I think it was important as we collaboratively had conversations. Um, I'm a huge fan of Simon Sinek, if anybody knows who that is. It uh, has a ma an amazing book called The Golden Circle, and it's always important as an organizational leader to always start with the why. Um, so when I kind of step back for a second, and give my three minute, minute elevator speech. I started as a principal approximately two years and three months ago, right in the throes of the pandemic. And um, at that time, I remembered stepping in to our building, which happened at the time to have nearly 1300 students. And we are a kindergarten through eighth grade school and have two buildings that are linked together. And that first three months, I really only spent time engaging with every single human in this building, as well as parents to really just know what was working, what they felt like we needed help with, and just to kind of get a feel. And what I noticed, and I really, really wanted to be intentional about it, especially after COVID-19 and just the social emotional concerns and trying to get adults and students reacclimated back to school. It was with the intention of um, trying to make a very large K-8 to school feel warm, connected, and intimate uh, because far too many children didn't know, um, you know, if they were in third grade, they didn't know the seventh graders and vice versa. And we really, really wanted to build that sense of co collegiality and community in our school. Um, so another piece that I wanted to do was ensure that we were building in our own school um, that whole notion of cultivating a positive culture. And that always comes with, with some fun, right? The comp healthy competition where students can be rewarded by exemplifying some of those positive traits and actions while we kind of say in our own lingo, repping your house. And I apologize. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me, uh, Jordan? I'm not sure. Yeah, or is yeah, it we can see. Okay, so if you notice, I... Murphy's Law happens sometimes. I actually have to leave my office because we have major construction. So I'm in one of my amazing AP's offices. And I was like, oh my God, I need to rep my crew. So if you notice, I have a green bead, a yellow or gold, silver, and I couldn't find my red bead. So I had to rep with my button, our integrity crew. Um, because it's important that although we are four houses, that we are one family. Um, and I also wanted to figure out a way like how we could also bring adults into this culture because people can have an amazing idea, but it gets no legs when you don't get buy-in for it um, and really, really disrupting, kind of shaking it up. Uh, but we needed to be able to also document that efficiently. So when I spoke to some of our colleagues, um, I know that we had tried other situations before I was, uh, I was in the building as a principal, like, you know, like how some schools use like dollar, you know, dog dollars or whatever it is. And that was not to me the most efficient way. Teachers have so much to do that I was digging around to to find a more efficient way to do it. Um, and that was where, as a, as a self-professed Harry Potter fan, we then created our house system. And then I also took some of the work of a, another uh, principal in Georgia um, who has a school uh, where they have this as well with fidelity uh, and wanted to kind of really implement it so that the kids could always track in a live way and not have to wait for that delayed update. And I kind of happened upon live school. And I got to say, it has so far been transformative in our school. We have a long ways to go, you know, with any shift in, um, in an organization or any new in initiative, it takes time to get there. Um, but in that first year where it would be brought it on board, um, the faculty, you know, there was inconsistency. Some people, you know, used it a little bit. Some people were skeptical, um, but it was important for me that every single adult in this building had access to be able to give children points. So it wasn't just about the teachers. It was about our kitchen staff, our school safety agents, our custodial team, because we are one community. Um, but like I mentioned before, um, help was scant very often. As the principal, I would change out of my heels and put on my fuzzy Ugg moccasins and run around to prepare house parties and things like that alone. And for the purpose of sustainability, I needed a team. 
And that is really where um, uh, year two, this, this magnificent four rock star ladies right here came in and we really were able to segue. So at this point, um, I wanna thank everybody for joining again and I wanna transition over to Ms. Hagelstein to open us up. Hello, hi, how are you? My name is Ms. Hagelstein, I go by Ms. H. I am the house coordinator for the House of Integrity. With us, you have uh, Ms. Erin Cobain, you have Ms. Shannon Ditta, and you have Ms. Kelly Cunningham. As you can see, we have our four houses, the House of Perseverance, the House of Innovators, the House of Integrity, and the House of Believers, all which come with their own models and themes, which are displayed throughout our school. And this is who we really are here at 119 in Queens. So the objectives for today is really talking about how did we implement this live school in a productive, positive way? Because as we have already uh, spoke about with Ms. Robinson, this is year number two. So we're going from one to year two to talk about the changes and how we actually know that this system is working at 119 so that you can see how it's working. So live school year number two, what have we changed? What's been going on? Well, this year we see that there is a 23% increase in recorded behavior. We have a lot of children in our school from the K through the eighth grade who want to be good leaders. So how do we know that 19,000 positive behaviors were actually recorded this school year? So everybody is giving out live points from early morning entry all the way to dismissal. And as Ms. Robinson said, everybody has access to live school. So these students at 119 have earned more than 218,000 uh, points. We have already had three house parties this year. We had 15 house student winners, uh, which we do uh, periodically throughout the year. And we also this uh, year are recognizing teachers who are the lead uh, point givers. So we have 12 house teach winner, teacher winners this year as well. So what's been going on from the first year to the second year? Well, we realized that it does take a village to do live school. So we needed to go from one person leading the ship to a whole bunch of shipmates. So that's where the coordinators came in. So each of us took on a house and we come together once, twice a month to meet where we run the program, answer questions for teachers, answer questions for students, staff members. And we do try to troubleshoot any problems or think of potential problems that may come about, you know, moving forward. So also we've been doing training, professional development to try to actually explain how to implement it effectively. So we do have that built into our system. So we did run that a couple of times for the teachers so they could actually understand what was going on with live school. And that gave them some interest because then we flipped it on them. We allowed the teachers to offer prizes and ideas so that we could change the whole entire system so that these behaviors would actually be there for the children to earn these points for. We gave the teachers a voice and that gave them a buy-in because then the teachers themselves were actually getting prizes so that they could see that they too were part of the competition and the children as well got those prizes. And now we have Miss Kelly Cunningham. Hi everybody. So the first part of this was really winning over the staff. So without the staff's buy-in, it was going to be very hard to really get this initiative on the ground and running. So we met with staff. So we had um, a full staff program where we met all together to discuss and collaborate and really try to think of different ideas for what rewards can we give to the students? What prizes can we have so that they knew and also felt like they were a part of this and they had a say, which it was a collaborative effort. And we all really did as a school a great job coming up with prizes and rewards and it really changed everything um even in the app we had um different rewards so we asked the teachers what would you want to give points for so of course it came with like a set of different um behavioral um efforts and behaviors 
So we kind of changed that up to see what would be best and what teachers were really looking for in their own classrooms and in the hallways to see what they would want to give points for. So the first step was really getting it, this staff buy-in and doing this in a collaborative effort to then get to the student's part. Um, so we also made it a competition to earn points for the staff. So instead of just having this for the students, um, like Ms. Hagelstein was saying earlier, um, we really made it a staff competition too. So the top teachers were displayed as the winners on our bulletin boards, which we'll um, get to in a little bit. We have pictures of that. We started with gift card prizes. So um, a Dunkin', a Starbucks gift card, because we know every teacher runs on caffeine. Um, and then most recently, we have um, an extra prep period for those teachers who gave the top live school points um, to students as a whole. And then the house celebrations, even if you are, um, even if a teacher is not currently teaching the class that is at the house party, they are all there. So all the house teachers in that particular winning house will be at the party. So we kind of really put into all, put into place all of these kind of different components to get the staff buy-in so that this could then lead to really a school-wide thing. So we even had one time um, as our security guard one, which was so awesome and great because then everybody really got to see that everybody really is a part of this and everybody really does contribute. So this is um, some of the bulletin boards that we have done uh, thus far this year. So to the right where it says teacher winners, that's the bulletin board that we put into place uh, to recognize and show off our wonderful top live school point givers. Um, so we have little pom poms for their colors and uh, everybody can walk past and see that. So that was one uh, recognition initiative that we put into place. Also, each board, um, each house has their own specific bulletin board. So believers, perseverance, um, house of integrity. So we all have our own boards and during house Fridays or during our morning meetings, we put into place different um, activities for the students to do. So the one that is actually displayed here is a building blocks. So we started with what makes a school community effective, what makes it strong, what makes it cohesive, and the students kind of put what they think makes a building um, strong. And we put that together so each board is displayed. So we change this um, every quarter and we have a different activity for the kids. Um, these are some of our teacher prizes that we mentioned before. So the poster um, to the left where it says time to relax, that's what each of the four teachers received or staff members received when uh, they won. So it says you've earned an extra rest and relaxation period. Thanks for being the top live school point. So just another incentive to get people to really want to give out points. Who doesn't want an extra prep? And then, of course, the gift cards. Um, so then once we have the staff buy-in, now it was time to get the student buy-in. So we needed attainable prizes for students. And again, this was something that we worked on as a school community, as staff members, we all kind of came together and decided what would be prize good prizes that students would really want, but also realize that we're also not millionaires over here. So what could really work to make this um, prize system be successful? So we came up with some parties for the house that does gain the most points. So we have board games and ice cream for them. Um, the top students also will earn prizes, whether it's a pizza party, whether it's lunch with Mrs. Robinson. Um, and they were also able to, this past time, go to a lunar uh, New Year celebration. The top classes in each grade and top students from each class attended this party. Um, but the parties as a whole is really great. It's from, like we said, we're a K to eight school. So it was really awesome and exciting to see a kindergarten student and an eighth grade student uh, celebrate together um, and play games and enjoy some ice cream and listen to some music. And our mascot always shows up. Uh, so it was really exciting to see each time. Um, and then at the end of the year, we have a celebration and we have house wars. So that's something that we put into place as well to get that 
student buy-in is also. Hey, Kelly. We had a question from Mike in the chat. I think this one went with um, the uh, teacher buy-in piece. Mm -hmm. the, um, the incentives for teachers, you talked about extra, extra prep and then the board and such. Who, um, who handles like the logistics of that? Who, who sets up the board and distribution and that kind of stuff? So the, it's given out. So the activity is given out either in a homeroom or during um, the house meetings that we have. So we do have house meetings where it's split up um, on once a month on Fridays. So some of the activities are distributed in there. Then we as the coordinators collect the activities and we um, put up the bulletin board and make it look all pretty, but it's not just us. We have a whole team behind us. Our school aides help us because they're amazing. Um, but all of the activities come to us. Awesome, thank you. And then just to build on um, what Miss Cunningham was sharing, because uh, I see, I think, hello, Mike, principal from Indiana. Um, it also on the back end goes back into programming and logistics. So uh, at, in the summertime when we're planning, we actually we actually embed into our schedule a period once a week, which typically we use sometimes for what is called school wide enrichment model. But then once a month at minimum, we also use that for our house meetings where children go to different classes with their house point teacher and things like that to do the events that um, and the activities that our team had shared. But on the back end, it's actually programmatically embedded into our schedule for the whole school. Awesome, and this might be a good time to ask this question as well. Uh, Pascal asked in the, in the chat, how do you assign students and teachers to the houses? So Ms. Robinson actually um, did that over the summer uh, with a little spinner on a website. <laughs> yes, so originally when we started this in year one, um, it was fully random where we just broke it up and then originally we had it by class. So let's say, for example, it was a kindergarten class, K-1, or a middle school, let's say 703 or whatever it is. The whole class was the same house color. But then uh, for the purpose of randomization, we then started to mix it up. So where um, once the children come into our building, they are pretty much in that house. There are a couple of outliers where it changes, but the intention is when they come into our school, they stay in that house for the duration of their time with us. So from kindergarten all the way up. Um, and in terms of, let's say, but let's say sometimes uh, we get new teachers. Uh, we try our best, like we, because now it's pretty steady and it was fully random where we try to like divvy it up. So when we get new people onboarded, we see, well, we have, you know, about 35 uh, faculty members in, let's say house of integrity, but in one of the other houses, it's really low. So we try to now balance it out. But originally it was fully randomized. Um, and that just, just to be equitable with the amounts. I hope that kind of clarifies it a bit. Absolutely. I, I really love what you guys are doing there because it gives a, it makes a big school feel small when that's, 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 that's awesome. Love it. Thanks. And to add on to that, can you hear me? I was yeah, yes, I can hear you. Work for a minute. But now when new students come into our building, our um, secretaries know to put them all into the house that has the least amount of students to try to always keep it balanced. So now it's that right now they're all going into the house of believers because they have a few less students and then we kind of move it each time depending. So it's still pretty random, but it goes on. And, then. and, and the only one, I'm sorry, Ms. Ditta, were you still speaking? No, go ahead. Okay, I was going to, to say the only one that's not fully like individually randomized for students is kindergarten. Just because we feel like they're not developmentally ready to be able to pivot classes during certain times. So they, the whole kindergarten class is the same house, uh, the same house. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I've, I've actually, yeah. I've heard of other schools doing the same thing with kindergarten yeah. for the same yeah. reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it's my turn to speak. So it works perfectly. Uh, so when we were setting us, ourselves up for success, we really started with having house winners every other month because Last year, we kind of tried to do it every month and it got a little insane, especially in those months where there's breaks of we have to have another party. And then it was almost like the students weren't getting those rewards because we were falling behind. So this year we did every other month and then it became more manageable for us to be able to give the rewards to the students. 
And then in our building, because now we have the four houses with the four coordinators, which is us, and then we have four administrators. Each administrator is the head of one of the houses. So when we have a house party, if that uh, if that administrator won, then they're responsible kind of to lead the party, make sure that we know what we need, ordering the, um, the materials, balloons, and kind of meeting with the coordinator and saying, okay, what else do we need? And so it really helps to have an entire team and it's not just falling on one person. And then we meet obviously with the administrators uh, periodically to talk about what we need to do and making sure that everything is were approved to continue moving forward. So um, one of the big things that we have used with Live School is our social emotional impact. So every Monday we have morning meeting or homeroom and it's extended on Mondays for 30 minutes where Tuesday through Friday is only 15 minutes. But during that 30 minute block, we give our students time to have, uh, to participate in social emotional activities. And so we try once a month or uh, once every two months, depending, to do those activities that Kelly Cunningham spoke about before, where we did building box for a successful school. So they worked on it in homeroom and then they colored it in their house color or they wrote on it what house they were. And then we separated them all so that each of our bulletin boards has yellow, green, red, and gray. And it didn't matter what class they were in. So they were all working on it together, but then separating it by house. So we all are one, but we're also our houses and we're also competing. So it's a little bit of both. And then we also did wishes for the new year. So we, everyone got a star and they wrote, they wrote their wishes for the new year. And then we put them all on the bulletin board. And so those are two of the activities we did that just allows the student, we give the teachers slides and they can go through a little activity or of just having a discussion about the, what are your wishes? What are your goals for this new year for 2023? And just leading that discussion that is less academic based and more about them, the whole child. And then you always wanna know what impact are you making? What are you doing? How can you tell? So we did a Google form in September and we gave it to our grades three through eight. We don't do it for our K to two because they're still a little, little to do a Google form. And they answer questions like, do you feel safe in school? Do you have someone that you can go to? Do you feel like, um, you know, you have friends? And just to give us a little idea of how our students are comfortable in our school. So we know that 76% of our students feel they have an adult that they can go to. There's someone in the building that they feel they can, uh, they can trust. Now this was a 14% increase from the beginning of the year. So from September to January, we have had a 14% increase of students who didn't feel like they had anyone and now they do. So obviously we're not at 100%, which is where we would wanna be, but I think every positive increase is a positive. Uh, and like was mentioned before, we started doing house meetings. So this, although a scheduling takes a lot of time to do, now that our students are all separated into different classes and they're amongst, last year 701 was all yellow, now they're all mixed up. So once a month, they meet all yellow innovators are together, all gray perseverance are together, and they do activities. And we will show you later on one of our favorite activities that Ms. Cobain ran. But we uh, made cards for kids. We participated in the Cards for Kids Foundation. We worked with our National Junior Honor Society and they kind of ran it. And then the students worked on it in their meetings. And we're planning on having them create chants to display at the final house party. So it's just a time where different kids from the house that they might not know these children these other students because they're not in classes with them. And it's just time to meet other people, to meet another adult in the building that they might not already know, which goes back to having different people that they feel they can trust. And it just is a um, another initiative that brings live schools to the forefront for them. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Ms. Kilbane. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Ms. Kilbane. I'm the house coordinator for the Believers, which is the greenhouse. And we wanted to give you an example of one of the um, school-wide activities that we kind of created to get students more involved in the houses in general. And um, these activities are really great, especially when they could see what their work is. I have find students all the time looking at the bulletin boards down the hallway, like looking for their work and really intently staring at them. So it's nice to see that our efforts are um, going nowhere this. But one of the initiatives that we started this year was a logo contest to increase the participation and have them take ownership of their own houses. So it, initially we had logos, I think that were probably uh, chosen by uh, Ms. Robinson and the staff. Um, so we decided that students could submit logo designs for each house, uh, school-wide, it doesn't matter what grade they were in. And um, we provided materials for the teachers to introduce the contest and the rules and help the, ch uh, the children learn how to make a logo. And after a two part selection process where we chose the designs that were the finalists, uh, the teachers, um, we got together and we decided which ones were the best three from each house. And then during our first school wide house meeting, the students voted and the finalists were unveiled in the next house meeting. And these are our new logos that were all student created. Um, they were mostly hand drawn. So we kind of took them and digitized them and solidified them to make them a little bit more unified like logos should be. And uh, so these are all student created, although they were digitized by um, myself. <laughs> Uh, some other initiatives that we were thinking about for our next year. Uh, first is live school points as currency. So in this type of uh, program, students can trade their points for currency as for prizes. Like for example, paying to participate um, in a basketball tournament and or paying to watch the tournament during the school day. So in, in this situation, the students would have to have a certain number of live school points to be able to play in the game or to watch the game. Another thing that we were thinking about doing is a mural committee as a visual house values club. So to kind of subdue vandalism or empower student voice um, and create an expressive outlet, of course, promoting SEL in a real world working environment, uh, the students would visually represent their house values by designing murals and painting them in various locations throughout the school. I think this is super effective because they get to actually be a part of the experience that's on their school as well as representing the themselves and giving their voice. Uh, so our hopes for continued growth. So besides the initiative, the bigger initiatives that we just talked about in the last slide, uh, some other things that we were thinking about upon approving is creating a system for uh, appropriate amount of points to be given at one time. So it kind of creates a standard for teachers. Like, so someone's not giving 10,000 points in one day, because obviously that's not fair. Uh, starting with a budget in the beginning of the year to allocate funds effectively for our prizes and whatever else we have coming in the future implementing more rewards at the class level for more teacher involvement. We always need to make sure that our teach, we have that teacher buy-in. Um, and Ms. Robinson recently purchased iPads to always have a uh, live school up for the teacher so we can actually carry around that, that iPad all day and just have the live school app open. Points for everybody in the hallway. Um, and also a schedule of events set in the beginning of the year by the live school coordinator so we know exactly what to expect and what we need to prepare in advance. That's the wrong way. There we go. So thank you for coming to our webinar. We hope this helped you guys. And if you have any questions, we can answer them now. That was great, guys. If um, for the folks that are on the call, if you want to ask some questions, you can uh, you can unmute and ask, or you can ask them in the chat. Um, we do have one from uh, Pascal. I believe you asked about your your rubric. Um, would would any of y'all uh, want to share like some of the the things you're looking for in class that students get points for? Acts of kindness. Um, we're looking for a participation, honest effort. I can open the app and, and read them. Does anybody remember any off the top of their heads? I often give a lot of active kindness ones because um, I think those are very effective. <laughs> yeah, homework completion is another yeah. one. Um, honest effort, uh, staying on task yeah. is another one. I'm trying to think the ones that I give out daily. 
so like we said before, when we asked the teachers what, what they were looking for in their classroom, I think the type of points that we give out really depends on the grade that you're teaching. So I teach second and third grade. So my points might be a little bit different than what Kelly or um, uh, Ms. Ditta and Ms. Hagelstein give because they teach upper grades. So like homework completion really is, isn't a problem in my classroom where it might be in like now house grade. points. Um, some teachers have charts in their room. Some teachers have their own like prize box that you have to have enough live school points in order to get the prizes. So it's really implemented throughout the school and within the classrooms um, a lot more than it ever was in the past. Also to clarify, we can give points to individual students, to the whole class or to an entire house. So if we're at a house meeting and everyone's wearing their house shirt colors, I'll give the whole house of believers uh, a point for wearing their house colors. But also uh, because the kids are mixed in the classes and they have different houses, if I'm teaching a class and I'm seeing everyone's giving an honest effort, then I'll give the whole class and those points go to whatever house they're in. So it kind of, it's a multi-tiered situation. And I was just gonna add there, cause I saw that question. So you give points to different houses for the same behavior. And so as a teacher, I don't necessarily know who, um, it, what house they're in when I'm giving those points because we're all mixed up. So we're just giving points to the, the individual child and then it, it is being calculated on the app to be in that house. Right. So and Kimberly asked about rewards. Um, we, we talked about like the house parties and, and, and those kind of things. I think uh, her question is more along the lines of, um, like the ones that are like more in the moment, less frequent, like, do you guys have like some levels of rewards? It's tiered for sure. I, Shannon, do you want to talk about the way that we tiered it? And we're still kind of working out a, I think, um, like a schedule or a program that works because we were talking about how we need more immediate things. So they don't start like, oh, we never got that or we're forgetting. So, um, Shannon, do you want to talk about that a little bit? What about, that's our big uh, move and push for next year is kind of that more on the teacher level. We have it available where as a teacher, the, the students can cash in their points for homework passes, they can cash them in for lunch with the teacher. Um, the thing is, is that you have to have teachers who are willing to do this and make sure that the students know that it's available. So that's really like our area of growth that we really need to work on. I'm on my fifth grade team, probably because I'm on this committee. We, and I, one of the other fifth grade teacher, she drives with me. So she's kind of like a pseudo part of our committee. And we do a lot of these things in the classroom. So as a fifth grade team, we have one prize box. So they, during their Friday house meeting at the end period, they're allowed to cash in their live school points. So we are already kind of like doing that, but it is, like we said, goes back to that teacher buy-in of allowing them, trying to say like, hey, this isn't just a school-wide initiative, it should be an initiative in your classroom as well. Yeah, and just building on what Ms. Zitta is saying, it definitely is happening in pockets, but it's something for us to build upon because what is being communicated to teachers and has been in year two is, you know, at the school-wide level, like on tier one, Right. This is what we're doing, but also too, you know, your kids that are that you that are front that you're front facing to every day. So some people do do like Miss Ditta is saying and and kind of attach what is happening in live school to then doing something every Friday uh, because some of the little ones kind of can't wait as long, and then it also kind of boosts up and helps to incentivize and reinforce certain behaviors to increase the likelihood of them happening again. But that more at this point is at the school level because when you know, like I said, our school is massive. So if we're talking about one house, we have like 400 kids in each house, right? Three, 350, 400. So in terms of also too, what we talk about, like myself and our house coordinators, try how can we figure out things that are also cost effective for incentives? Because it's very easy to spend a lot of money to incentivize things for hundreds of kids or thousands. If we have, like I said, we have, you know, almost 1250 is our population approximately. So that's definitely an area that we're continuing to push and reflect on. Yeah, and um, I'll make sure we drop in the chat as well. We've actually got a lot of reward ideas if folks are like looking for those. We have a, like a whole database of reward ideas. So I'll make sure we drop that in the chat for Kimberly or anybody else. Um, I circled a couple of things um, early on and I wanna see if you guys made the same connection I did. So 
uh, Miss Robinson, you you mentioned that you wanted every adult involved early, and then um, I think it might have been it might have been Jean was going over and she said that like one month even even your SRO had like the most points, and then at the end that what what Shannon was presenting on about about SEL that like going up fifteen percent. Did you guys make that same connection I did because I I like drew a line to those things. Did, did you guys see that too? Yes, definitely. Um, with everything, we always try to lead with data because, of course, we all know that's like, that's like the soft, warm and fuzzy stuff, the qualitative, but then quantitative still shows um, a really, really critical component. So being able to kind of see how um, live school continue to increase the usage, right? We still have a long ways to go. There are not people that are ready to join in the wacky dance with us yet in the building, but we've just noticed the, the trajectory shift um, and we are seeing that in alignment with those things and the events that we're doing and the supports that we are putting in place, um, we, we are seeing the connections. And to add on to that, when our um, our school safety agent, when she won, when I was I was the one who was pulling the data to see who had given the most points. And when I saw that it was our safety agent, I was like, this is amazing because it's not someone who's in front of the classroom like trying to get the students to behave. It's someone who is seeing those great moments outside of the classroom and still being part of it and connecting and getting to know the student's name so that she can even give them points to begin with. So it was really like such a cool moment to be a part of. And just to jump off of that, it was also awesome because it was our first time that we were like rewarding uh, teachers. So it also like kind of opened other teachers eyes like, oh my goodness, us even like the safety people are doing it. So like I should be doing it too. Like, like we, I can do it if they can do it kind of thing. Like they're not even in the classroom. So that was really great that it happened to be like the first time that we did something like that, that they won. Mm -hmm. There was also a question about whether or not uh, we take away points. Um, I am not a fan of taking away points. It is just, you know, the teacher, the mom, the special ed teacher for many years inside of me. I feel like if a child did something in a moment and they earned it, they deserve that. Um, and no, we, we do not take away points. Yeah, only reinforce for desire. Yeah, behavior. only reinforcement for this. Thanks, Ms. Kilbane. Oh, I had one uh, one question that I wrote down as well. Um, and thank you for that on, on points. Um, and this one had to do with one of your teacher incentives. And it's, it's like one of my favorite ones, but it's like the hardest one to pull off. So I was curious about logistical needs. And it's probably a question best for Ms. Robinson. Um, the extra prep period, how do you guys manage to, to work that out? Because that, that's an awesome incentive for teachers. So it's not really an extra prep period for the teachers. Oh, wait, are you talking about for my house coordinators or for our house meetings? I'm sorry. Mm. He's talking about how the prize when you gave the top winners the prize. Oh, okay. I was all confused. I'm sorry. I apologize. That um, is what you were talking about, right? Yes. As an incentive, right? A reward, right? Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Now I'm yep. there. So, you know, every school is a, is the movable building. It's like Tetris every morning, right? We start opening the building and prepping around 530, right? In the car and in heading and into the building. Um, and when we knew uh, who at that particular month was, were our top earners, I, I had spoken to my, um, the people who helped me program in the morning and things like that. I said, listen, I was like, I think it would be lovely if we can uh, give them an extra period. So let's see if we have anybody, sometimes we'll get substitutes and then they have extra um, periods that are open and things like that. It just works out. So like, for example, we knew a couple of days before, but I told them, I said, listen, when we have a day where we're pretty good with attendance, I want to fill it in on that day. So we had a day where it was pretty light and we had some substitutes. So that day we did it. Sometimes also going forward, and this is always, of course, um, contingent upon budget, but you could bring in, uh, you know, once a week, depending on what it is, uh, um, and pay a substitute for the day to kind of circle and say your program will be, you know, for five or six periods out of the day to go cover different teachers who we are incentivizing. So that's that's another um, consideration for a programmatic lens. But that was kind of what we did. Awesome. I, I love that idea. And I'm, I'm sure there's like different ways of doing it, but I was, I was curious how you guys do it. Um, okay. We've got just a, a minute or two left. I don't want to take too much of everybody's time. But if there's any questions, um, please feel free to ask. 